Hello Makers and welcome back to Spectiva Studios. Good to have you here. Because we were working on the Cricut project last week, I was inspired to see if we could do something else Well, we still have it set up. So I have the Cricut I'm working with today and I want to be able to create a brand new project. And if you haven't seen last week's project, well, here's the description down below. You can go click on this and check it out and see some of the tools we're going to be using. We're going to be using similar tools this week, but a completely different piece of artwork and a different approach. Now to get things started, I am working uh, this time on a on a bigger piece. This is going to be a, a one foot by two foot piece of artwork again. So 12 inches across the top and uh, 24 inches top to bottom. And I have a cutting mat that will allow me to do just that. So that's, uh, that's a good thing. I can get started with that. Now the first thing of course I need to do is to go over to the computer and uh, start working on the different tools to design what we will be creating today. Now, once again, when we're working with the Cricut Maker, we have to use Cricut Design Space to get there. But we don't have to necessarily use the tools. And as we've talked about in the past, the tools are not really as robust as we might need for people who are doing design. Fortunately, we have access to a tool that will help us to get there. And that is a tool called Inkscape. But the good news about Inkscape, it is a free open source software program. So it doesn't cost you anything. It's uh, fairly easy to use. Again, it, like anything else, it's, it's a, a tool not unlike Adobe Illustrator where you can learn some basics, but if you really want to master this, it's going to take you a while. Now, in our case, we're going to be able to work with uh, a couple different things. First of all, we have the document we're going to be creating here. And the first thing I should probably do is make sure that my document size here in Inkscape matches what I'm trying to create in the real world. So I'm going to come up here to the file menu and I'm going to select document properties and let's set this from millimeters into inches just because it's going to be easier for me and again my width is going to be 12 inches on this one and the height is going to be 24 inches all right so in doing this now my paper in here has been reflected and I can uh, of course resize this over here on the left hand side I have a zoom tool and it will allow me to zoom out and and see what this is going to look like uh, all told all right, so there we go. So that's really the, the orientation of what our project is going to look like when it's done. I may make it a little bit bigger, but uh, this is at least going to allow us to see all the different elements. Now, what am I trying to do in here? Well, this week, what I thought would be interesting is to work with, um, again, like we did last week with last week's project, we created apertures that had color popping through. We had rows of color, and it turned out pretty well. And what I'd like to do this week is something similar and yet different. And I'm going to work instead with a triangle, which is what we used as our aperture. I'm going to work with uh, a, a, an ellipse, an arc. Now, the first thing I want to be able to do here, since we are working with what will hopefully be an arc of some sort, in essence, it's really just a half of a circle, is I'm going to come over here to the left-hand side. I'm going to grab the circle tool here, the ellipse and arc tool. I'm going to select that. And then over here on my canvas area, I'm going to drag out and I'm going to create myself a circle. Now, you'll notice that it can comes in, it can be very elliptical. And if I want to lock it to being a circle, I can use one of my modifier keys. If I hold the control key down, for example, it will lock it into certain shapes including a circle. I can do the same thing with a shift key that will allow me to just have a little bit more granular control. But in this scenario, I want to make sure we have something that's going to be a perfect circle for what we're doing. And I'm just going to make it fairly large just so I can better work with it and let it go. Now, this circle is going to be the foundation for our arc, but we don't want the whole thing. We just want half of the circle. So how do we make that happen? Well, in this case, it's very hard for me to come in and cut this thing in half necessarily. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use another shape uh, as sort of a knife. And I'm going to use my, uh, my rectangle tool. By the way, I can control the different colors of the objects down here. So I'm going to make my rectangle green just to, or whatever color I want. I can make them different colors. So I'm going to grab my rectangle like that, I'll make it uh, yellow. I just want to differentiate the colors because what I want to do now is I'm going to grab one color. In this case, I'm going to grab my rectangle tool. I'm going to use it and I'm going to cover up half of the object that I don't want there to be anymore. I want to re retain this half, but not the whole thing. Now with both of the objects selected, I'm going to come up here to my menu and I want to go to the path menu. And what the path menu allows me to do is to create the interrelationship between these two objects. So what I want to do here is I want to select cut path. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the path between these two to create a dividing line. And what it's done is it's gotten rid of the fill for me. Now it still looks like it's a full circle, but if I click on one side, you can see that now I have a separate entity and I'm going to delete that. And that's leaving me with just this guy right here. So this is my arc. And this is going to be the path we want our Cricut cutter to be cutting along. And so what I want to be able to do in here is I want to be able to take this object. I'm going to actually 
copy and paste it. I'll make a copy of it here as well. So, so I can have it down here. And what I want to do with this guy is I want to take it and first of all, I can resize it. And one of the things, again, to be careful, if I'm just kind of randomly resizing it, it's going to allow me to stretch this out in all sorts of different ways. I may not want to do that. So if I'm holding my control key down while I resize, it's always going to stay as the arc that it is. And I'm going to say, let's make it a smaller size. Again, remember this is 12 inches by 24 inches. So this is going to be fairly sizable. And if I also click on this object a second time, you'll notice it will change the tools. And now I can take it and I can say, let's, let's rotate a little bit. So now what I want to be able to do is create a whole series of arcs and ellipses here that are going to be based on this shape that are going to be kind of pointing in different directions and be different shapes, uh, different sizes, not different shapes. They'll be the same shape. So I'm going to copy this guy, for example, bring it down here. And again, let me hold my control key down and make this a little bit smaller, a lot smaller. And now if I click on this guy again, click on it, there we go. And now I can say, let's rotate this guy this way. And so what we're gonna do is create a whole bunch and it's probably easier to start with kind of some larger pieces. And maybe this is our, our kind of our biggest size. And if I copy this one a few times, and sorry, we'll have, we'll have one of these show up right over here, let's say. We'll copy another one. Let's have this one show up like over on this side. And again, we don't want to make it too uniform. So moving things around and having it be kind of uniquely abstract is one of the goals that I'm setting. I'm going to just take this guy, tuck it off to the side. I just put that there as a back, you know, a backup in case I accidentally accidentally delete anything. But if I come in here again, click on this guy, I can say let's uh, let's rotate the curve of this one this way. Let's take this guy here, and let's rotate the curve. Whoops, looks like I'm off of. Go here and we'll say you're like that. And this one here can be uh, similar. And we'll rotate it so that it's more looking like that. Okay. And again, no right way to do this. Uh, I'm going to go and create uh, another copy of this. And I'm going to make this a different size. So holding my control key down, I'm going to kind of step it down to the next level. Let me copy and paste this one. And again, I'm going to start to fill in some of the blank areas that I have in my piece of artwork just to just to give it a home. And I can move anything around later if it doesn't work for what I'm trying to do. But I'm really just trying to create a bunch of apertures. And I also might determine how close to the bottom do I want to have this happen. Maybe I don't want it to I keep a bit of a margin down at the bottom as I like to do with a lot of the pieces that I create. And I think we have room for one more do that. Let's grab this guy, put it over here. And again, I'm going to want to rotate these guys in different directions. So you go like that. And you're going to go like this. And you're going to go maybe not as far. We'll just kind of bring up and down. There we go. And this is the fun part. This is the fun part where you really can kind of visualize what's happening with these different pieces and start thinking about the colors you might want to be placing behind them as we pull these things together. And I'm going to grab this smallest one. So I'm going to have three different sizes in this case. And I'm going to grab this guy. And I'm going to, let's put one right in there. And I'm going to start using it to fill in all of the other kind of holes that we have in our design with this. Oops. And do that. Try that again. You go in there. You go over here, and I think, uh, let's see, we're going to put one right about there. Is there anything that else that needs? And again, this is where you start kind of pulling the different pieces around. And I think, I'm going to pull this down a tiny bit. I'm going to take a copy of the, the medium-sized one. I'm going to bring this and put it right up here. Fill in that space, and let's, let's turn it like that. Okay. Now, again, I want to make sure that these guys are kind of pointing in different directions as well. So let's vary these up. <laughs> and 
I think that's, uh, let's take this one and turn this a little bit. Yeah. I don't want them all to be pointing in the same direction in the same areas. Just something to think about. I think that's kind of cool. It's going to give me an opportunity to have a fair amount of variety. And what I want the Cricut Maker to do is just to cut a line on each one of these. And I'm going to open these up as flaps. And behind them, I'm going to be putting some color like we did with our project last week. And this will hopefully pull the things together. Again, I'm looking at kind of the balance of shapes and things. I'm going to pull this over here a little bit like that. And... Yeah, I don't want to get too close to the margins on either side. I think it's good. We have a little bit more on the bottom than we have on the top. All right, I think that's going to work out fine. I don't need this backup piece anymore. I'm going to delete that. So I'm happy with how this has turned out. Now what I want to do is I want to save this. I'm going to come in here and I'll call this uh, to save as. It's going to save it as a as SVG file. And I'll save this into my documents and I'll call this, uh, how about just ellipses? Okay ellipses and click on the save button. Now back in Cricut Design Space, all we need to do is come up here. We have an untitled project. I need to go and find the file that I was just working on in Inkscape. I'm gonna come down here and click on the upload button. And I'm gonna say, let's go find that image, please. And I'm gonna go look around on my hard drive for it. Again, this is in my documents folder. And I created something called ellipses, and there it is. So it's bringing it in, again, looks familiar. And then exactly what we want, I'm gonna click on the continue button and it's going to bring it in. I'm going to call this uh, ellipses and I'm going to say upload. So it's going to bring it in and it's going to put it onto my canvas. Now again, I might want to move this around depending on what I'm working with here. I am going to be working with 12 inches across and 24 inches up and down. And this is going to give me a couple of extra inches at the top if I want. So I can bring this down to about 20 inches over here. And I'm trying to make it about equidistant. Okay. Now, again, one of the things to understand as I'm laying it out over here is if I go over here and I click on the make button and say, yeah, let's uh, save my project and make this thing up. And I'm going to say ellipses. Then when it gets to the cutting mat, it's going to say, okay, uh, how do you want to mat this? I'm going to, I'm going to be using a mat. It's my 12 inch by 24 inch mat here. Let's hit confirm. And it says, Hey, I figured out a way to save the least amount of paper. <laughs> or they save the most amount of paper by using the least amount of space. I'm like, no, that's not helping me, no. So I want to cancel out of here. And again, this is just a step to be aware of. You want to come over here and you want to make sure you've selected your big object, your ellipses, or all of the things you want. And then down here on the lower right hand, there's a little paper clip that says attach. And I want to click on attach. What this is saying is I don't want to have this show up as separate things. I want to show up in the configuration it currently is. And now if I go back, back and click on the make button, it's going to show me in my cutting mat, ah, that's how that object's going to be. So this is where I'm going to come in and kind of do the fine tuning. And again, the red borders are really kind of the edges of my paper, the area beyond which we can expect that the, uh, the cutter will not cut. So I can say, you know what, that looks pretty darn good for what I want to be able to do. And now it's a matter of clicking on the continue button. And it's going to say, all right, I got to go find the, the, the Cricut machine. And it's looking for it right now. It found it. And it's going to say, uh, the last thing you used was heavy watercolor paper, 140 pounds. Exactly what I'm using this time. So I'm going to say, let's do it again. And now it says, are you ready for your tools and materials? We are. Next thing I need to do is go back to the Cricut cutter and get it prepped. And uh, let's get things rolling. So as I mentioned before, I'm already set to go. I have a piece of 12 inch by 24 inch heavy duty watercolor paper in here. I just need to feed it into my Cricut. So again, I'm looking at the slab. I have some tabs in here that this mat will slide under. And I'm gonna click on this double flashing arrow button and I will draw my paper into the cutter. And once I'm done, because I've already sent the signal from the computer into the cutter, I just need to click on the Cricut button and it will do the rest. So the paper is cut. Let me get it out of here by pushing the double arrow again. And uh, you can't really see it here, but once I peel it off the backing, 
we have some really nice apertures. Some half moons happening all over the place here. And this is kind of fun. I may go with the smooth being the, the side where I want to, uh, to pop things out. We'll do that. So again, if I just take and start folding these tabs back, I can get a sense of what's going to be happening behind the scenes here. And it's okay to take your time here. And just gently bring it up. We don't want to force it. We certainly don't want to wrinkle these things. We want them to kind of fold along their natural lines. I'm going to pull these up like this. There we go. And while I'm doing this, I'm starting to think about some of the colors I want to be able to put back here. And with our colors, again, the palette we use, or the palette you choose, can vary. I could say, you know what, I want to do different hues of blue in this scenario. I want to have something that's really just all about different shades of blue, and it can really pull this together thematically very differently. I could also come in here and say I want to do something that's very multicolored and uh, monochromatic, or whatever I want to do. They're, they're, it's really up to me. I think for what I'm doing here is I'm probably going to go with some fairly assorted polychromatic colors. We'll keep it fairly bright because uh, I have the tendency to roll that way anyway. And uh, again, how, we, how, how bright we go is entirely up to us, but again, if I'm using some of the, uh, the colors I've used in past projects, I can also test these things out. I can drop them behind and say, how is that color going to look right? before I actually glue anything down? I have that option. So it, it gives me a fair amount of flexibility on what it is that I want to be able to uh, have the end result be. And if I decide, okay, that blue is a good one for there, what I will do is I will probably grab a pair of scissors, just the easiest thing for me to do, and I'll just create a square of color that can easily fit over that hole. Okay, so that would fit there, and again, I'd dry fit it in here. And as we were working on our last project, we want to be very careful when we're gluing things down that we don't end up gluing the actual thing that's trying to open because, well, that's going to cause some problems for us. So I'm going to kind of glue around the actual flap like this and I'll make sure it's a, enough glue to hold my paper in place and then just get this stuck down firmly. And that glue will dry and become transparent. But uh, what this allows us to see very quickly is, hey, that blue color is coming out beautifully. That's going to be really, really nice for what we need to be able to do. All right. Now, I'm going to go through this, and I'm going to start dropping color back behind each one of these. I don't know. I may stay within a pattern of colors. I may actually have completely different colors. Depends on what mood I'm in. But let's give it a couple of minutes, and I'll show you what the result is. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Now, it only takes a few minutes to find the colors and paste it down. I decided to go with an array of colors. And uh, by the way, here's my finished piece. Well, actually, this is the back of my finished piece, but these are the different colors I chose. And again, you know, no one's going to see back here, so you can really just kind of chunk out the pieces you want. But if we flip it over, there we are. And again, you know, I think of this almost like an advent calendar of colors that I can open up for myself. And I think it turned out really well. This is really a fun piece. And the interesting thing about this, when we have these apertures again, as you walk by it, the colors change, right? Because when you're looking straight at it, it's going to look like one thing. And you're going to see these little, little half moons of color poking out, depending on how, how wide you open up these different flaps. And it's an easy enough project, again, now having a Cricut Maker, and if you don't have a Cricut Maker, they are a little expensive, I'll be honest, but you may be able to find one that has been used, because somebody may have purchased it thinking they were going to use it a lot more than they did, and check out a marketplace or eBay or some other place, you may be able to find one for a, a pretty good deal. 
Um, and uh, again, you don't need the latest and greatest to do what we're doing. The software is not so late and great, uh, but it will cut things out for you. Uh, which, by the way, if I had to do this with the utility knife, I wouldn't. It just would be too hard to keep the uniformity of, uh, of the design. So if you want to do some nice geometric uh, art, this is a great way to do it. Anyway, that's what I wanted to share with you today. We'll, we'll get this into a frame and uh, I'll show you what it looks like. It'll, it'll, it'll be right up here. Yeah, I'll put it right there so you guys can see what the finished product looks like. But anyway, I had a bunch of fun with this. Hope you did as well. And uh, again, we do this every single week. Every Friday morning, we drop a video. We'd love to be able to share what we're doing with you. So please hit that subscribe button so you can be included as the folks in our community who are getting uh, notified on mixed media art and kind of cool things we can do with all sorts of different tools, not just Cricut. But we do a lot with collage. We do a lot with acrylic paint, etc. So happy to have you here and uh, have a fantastic time. I'll talk to you real soon.